So we are going to do a stereoscopy on this patient uh, because we are doing uh, um, a diagnostic survey for the case of infertility. So during a stereoscopy, uh, you have to prepare your patient and the uh, patient is prepared like um, about four hours before or a night before. They are admitted in hospital, consent is taken and uh, um, if the patient is nulliparous, it is good to ripen the cervix using misoprostol. You can give about 200 micrograms of misoprostol vaginally to help soften the cervix so that when you're dilating the cervix, it's a bit easier. But uh, if a woman has delivered some children and they are uh, parous, it is uh, usually a bit easier to, to dilate the cervix. Uh, so on your trolley, you should have uh, dilators uh, eggers dilators in different sizes uh, because you are going to dilate the cervix uh, depending on the need. If you are going to do um, a quick diagnostic hysteroscopy, for example, you are going to use a single channel uh, sheath. And this is what they call a single channel sheath. It is about 2.7 millimeters. But uh, sometimes you have a 4 millimeter sheath, which is the traditional hysteroscope. But the sheath can be as small as 1.7. For example, for office hysteroscopy, you have the uh, flexible uh, scopes which are about as tiny as 1.7. So for that case, you don't even need to dilate the cervix. But if you're going to use a scope above 2.7 millimeters, then you might need some dilatation. So you need the Eggers dilator in different sizes, from size 4, size 6, 7, 8, up to and if you're going to do any operative hysteroscopy or any intervention like removal of foreign bodies, uh, tubal cannulation, removal of myomas, and any sort of resection of endometrium, then you have to use the operating channel. This is the operating channel. It, uh, it has ports for fluid in, fluid out, and then a port for, for the telescope. The telescope goes here. So this is about uh, eight millimeters. So if you need operation or an operative intervention, you need to direct the cervix of around nine millimeters. So you have to anticipate uh, what you're going to do uh, before um, you start hysteroscopy. Of course, um, you also need other things with the stereoscopy. Uh, for example, you need the fluid pump. Uh, this is what we call a fluid pump. And the fluid pump helps you to distend uh, the cavity of the uterus. You know a uterus is a muscle, so you need to distend uh, the cavity so as you get a potential working space. So uh, most of the times, we dilate or distend the uterus. Uh, with, uh, we start with minimal pressure from around 150. Uh, if you're going to do a quick diagnostic, you can even use uh, about 100 millimeters of mercury. But if you're going to do operative or any other bigger intervention, you can go up to around 200, 250. And then you set the flow rate. Um, this kind of pump has uh, pressure, the flow rate, that is the, flow, the rate at which the fluid will flow. And then, um, it has an option for irrigation and suction, so you can also use it for laparoscopy. So you can use uh, irrigation, suction, and set the pressures according to the way um, you need it. And then the fluid media, we generally use normal saline or crystalloids, ringers lactate, to distend the uterus. Um, but if you're going to do any resection, using bipolar or monopolar energy. For example, if you're going to use monopolar energy, then you need dextrose or glycerin. But if you're going to use a bipolar receptor scope, then you need um, um, to use um, normal saline. So that is the equipment you need. Obviously, you also need the camera, the light source, and the other gadgets as used in the horoscope. So uh, on this patient, we are going to do tubal cannulation to see if the tubes are functional. And uh, this is what you call a hysteroscopic tubal catheter. It 
it is uh, about say, five French and it's uh, a little carved at the tip with a guide wire that goes through. <laughs> so we introduced this through the working pot or the working channel of uh, the telescope. Introduce this uh, into the working channel of, uh, of the external sheath, and we are able to cannulate the tubes individually. The reason we want to cannulate these tubes individually is because um, it is better to appreciate uh, which tube has a problem than when you introduce a dye directly into the endometrial cavity. You can also remove debris, uh, for example, if you have tubal blockage and the ostia. Uh, especially in an event of a previous evacuation, um, any previous infection, sometimes these ladies have small debris at the ostia, so you can dislodge the debris using a tubal cannula. So sometimes um, you can also use a grasper. This is called a stereoscopic grasper. Uh, we use this instrument to either remove debris from the endometrium or the ostia or you can use this to pick out polyps, small myomas, uh, IUDs, and any other pathology in the uterus. You can even use it to, to take a biopsy. So the hysteroscopic grasper still goes through the working channel. And that is how we do operative hysteroscopy. So, in this case, we are going to do tubal cannulation and uh, direct the cervix up to around 8 millimeters in size so that it can accommodate the external shift of the telescope. So I'm going to use uh, this external sheath and this is what we call the obturator. It has an obturator because the obturator is a bit smooth and will not traumatize the uterus. So I insert the external sheath and then after inserting the external sheath I then collect, con connect the, um, the working uh, channel of the, of, the, of the equipment. It has a telescope. This is a 2.7 millimeter telescope in the working channel. That is connected. The next step is to connect fluid. So I have to put, connect um, fluid from a pump to the inlet, then I connect another tube for the outlet. The reason for this is with operative hysteroscopy you need to have an exact picture of how much fluid goes in and how much fluid comes out. And you have to uh, make sure you keep track of the deficit, especially if you are doing uh, resectoscopy. For example, you're resecting myomas, you're resecting uh, polyps, or any, any resection on the uterus, and you're using dextrose. Commonly, that's what we use with monopolar. So, uh, because of the risk of fluid overload, we usually want to keep track of what goes in and what goes out. You should be mindful if you go beyond a deficit of one liter, and anything more than 1.5 liters deficit should call for an alarm. You can either stop the surgery or you quickly give the patient furosemide um, to avoid uh, dilution or hyponatremia. So those are some of the complications you will get with this telescope. Of course the other complications like perforation of the uterus and uh, an injury uh, or injury to the cervix. But commonly it is perforation and dilution hyponatremia. But for diagnostic hysteroscope and short cases um, we work uh, quickly in less than an hour and we should not be able to get those complications. So um, we are going to 
a touch. So let me put the the water tubing onto the 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 channels are well labeled with a mark there is a mark showing you inlet and another one showing you outlet so the one showing you inlet is where you put the inlet tubing make sure that you flush can you flush please and you get out any air bubbles in the tubing so you always flush the tubing to make sure you avoid any air bubbles going into the uterus because of the risk of air embolism enough i connect this to the inlet and then i can connect another tubing to the outlet we set the pressures to 200 and the flow rate to 400 it shall work pressures of 200 and flow rate of about 400 